Hello everyone, watch this review here with a look at Wolverine from the Wolverine vs. Sabretooth 2-pack, a Toys R Us exclusive. In this review I'll be only looking at Wolverine and his kick-ass bike, which of course is a kind of incentive to pick up this pack. And uh, the Sabretooth review will already be up and you can find a link to that in the details or wait till the end of the video where I'll link you again. Let's have a quick look at the packaging, because I didn't cover it too much in the Sabretooth review, but um, technically it might be called the Backroad Brawl set, although it doesn't mention that right on the front. In the back of the package we have this really cool little diorama scene here, which looks a little bit like the insert for the packaging, but a little different. There's also a small read-up which basically describes how this fight would have gone down. As you can see, you know, it's a really nice looking backdrop here, which, you know, I may or may not save. I probably won't! But, uh, with that out of the way, yeah, there's nothing on the bottom. Let's open this up and have a look. Here's a quick look at the two figures still on the original insert. As you'll probably later notice, uh, the lighting settings are darker for this, so it's going to look a little bit different from the other review. But yeah, very cool looking setup. Okay, so I managed to get the figures out of the packaging with minimal damage. Thankfully, the rubber bands were able to be cut without removing the plastic. Um... I do somewhat regret removing the rubber band securing his hands, just because it's tough to get a realistic looking riding pose, but, you know, at some point or another I would want to pose this figure off bike, so I guess it had to be done. As you'll see, you know, he has open hands, but they aren't like a really tight grip, so it doesn't look like he's really holding the thing, unless he's supposed to be holding this and this, so... Yeah, posing this is just going to be a bit of a nightmare. But here's a closer look at the Wolverine, or Logan if you prefer. Um, let's quickly compare his face to the unmasked Wolverine. Here's this face. Here's the unmasked. As you can see, they used a very different mold. This one came out later on. And there's a lot more detail and stuff and better paint on it, but you know, this is a good likeness. It's more of a serene looking Wolverine, not the vicious looking one that we have here. In general, I don't think the quality is quite as cool as the later one, but you know, it's a different look for the character. Uh, one of the big downsides though is the fact they didn't bother painting underneath here, so you can clearly tell that the jacket's separate pieces. I mean, if you want to take the jacket off, it's a nice touch, but if you took the jacket off, you'd still have the sleeves on, so that doesn't make any sense. They should have just painted that area in. But, um, yeah, small oversight. Besides that, the figure looks okay, despite having a sort of hunched posture. I guess from, uh, too much riding. The claws do need to be straightened, though. Now, it's weird, but these ones are loose. This one looks like... There it goes. For some reason these look like they're fused in the front, but it does look like they're separate, whereas this one's all separate, so not sure what the deal was with that. But these are the bone claws as opposed to the metal ones. A uh, quick height comparison. Here we have him against a crouching saber tooth, but if you pull saber tooth's leg back up, like so, you'll see that saber tooth is suitably much larger than Wolverine, which is how it should be. Before I get into articulation, I just want to quickly address the few points that really bug me about this figure. Uh, first of all, earlier I mentioned that he was a little bit hunched over. It's actually very noticeable when he's standing. You'll notice the neckline goes up an angle and it doesn't go up till over here as opposed to a normal figure where it's more of a straight neck and it's more equal on the shoulders. I guess they did it for just the whole biking, but, I mean, there are probably other ways they could have done it better. The other problem is the hair comes out a lot in the back, so the head can't ever really go up. So, in addition to being hunched, his face is also hunched forward, so you really can't see the face at all. So the hat's always obscuring pretty much everything at face level. Like that. 
Um, one of the other things really annoying me are the fact that his hands look really hokey. I mean, they should have done like a tighter grip, so it would look like more of a fist, but like this, you can always tell that he's meant to be holding something, in this case, the bike handles, which really doesn't work. The other big thing is, look at this. Look at this. Is it just my imagination, or are these claws visibly longer than these ones? I mean, that's just seems like sort of a glaring error. I mean, it could just be my imagination, but these definitely look a lot longer. I did manage to detach them, though, and, you know, they do have a kind of cool look to them. Not for the fact that one hand looked longer than the other. Uh, the good points about this figure are the fact that the clothing looks pretty good, decent. I mean, there's a good amount of sculpting on it. Okay use of texture. Uh, paint app, so-so. I mean, there's paint variation on the jeans and everything, but they just don't look like denim or anything. And then the jacket doesn't really look much like leather. As mentioned before, it looks more like pleather, as does the hat. But um, in terms of articulation, we have a rotating forearm. I really wish they would have given an extra point here at the wrist, just because it looks kind of hokey too, the way that he holds his arms out. So we can't like get a good sort of claw fist motion up. Like he's threatening somebody, but whatever. Um, we have a ball and socket here at the elbow, which again just doesn't look that great with these sleeves. Ball joint at the shoulder, good range of motion. It's not impeded by the jacket because the jacket is a separate piece and it's cut pretty far off from it. Head can rotate, but not a whole lot. Point also goes up and down a little bit. Now he has a torso joint which can have a full range of motion, it goes forward a bit, but severely impeded by the jacket in the back, which does bug me. Now he has a line-jointed ball joint here, and the um, hip will swivel, or thigh actually. The only problem is this joint's really frozen right now, so I've got to break that in. Otherwise, you know, it's only be able to kick out the way that I have the leg facing, which is why I really hate these joints. I had double joint here at the knee. Then at the ankle we have rotation in addition to a little forward back. Not as much as I would have liked. Um, although I really am not that impressed by this figure. I mean it's a decent look for the character and something I would do like, but I really wish they would have opted for the metal claws as opposed to the bone claws. Just a little issue. As for the actual bike, not a pretty sweet ride except for the big X here is a little obvious. So not sure why they went that route because he's kind of going for more of a civilian look and he wouldn't go for all these X identifiers on his vehicle. But yeah, you know, the bike kind of makes it worth it. So it does complete the look. But until next time, folks. By the way, quick reminder that Sabretooth review is available if you haven't seen it. I just thought uh, post them like this because I wanted to find like a little guitar or something and just have them just really shred. Hehe. <laughs> kind of funny, right? But yeah, you can check this out if you haven't already. Until next time.